Hello, blessed Muslim Community Center of the Bay Area and our friends in Indonesia and whoever else is here. Uh, this is a lot of fun and it's fun for me too to go back over and try to pull out the highlights of these various books for you. And I know it's hard for people to keep attention more than like 15 or 20 minutes, children and adults alike. And I'm sorry, this is a whole hour, but there's a lot of good things in it. And I hope you will now go back and actually look at the books, do the workbook exercises, do the fun things and the activities and really get to know the details. I'm only giving you kind of a, a bit of an overview with a few things that I particularly loved, but obviously I can't tell you everything that's in the book. So one of the, one of the things I want you to know wait, is, I want, to, want you to know something. Even if you don't pay as a cat, and children don't pay as a cat, and even if you know, you're not even fasting yet, I have to tell you that the qualities and the virtues and the things that you can learn from just learning about these things, these, these are things you need in your life right now. For example, um, being generous and being grateful and selfless and self-discipline and patience and being honest and having moderation and trust in God's loving wisdom. These are seem to be abstract ideas. But what you'll understand and what we're about to learn is that these are not just abstract ideas, they're urgent and they relate to your own, they relate to your lives, all right? So, all right, we're gonna start with a story, all right? Um, once upon a time, the children were on a merry-go-round out in the middle of the park. And you see them on the merry-go-round? And you notice there's some children looking longingly who don't have the money to go. They don't even have the small change to go in the merry-go-round. And the children are looking at that. But the children are on their way from the merry-go-round to go and visit their, their elder, their teacher, Hajj Abdullah, right? So on the way to the gate of the garden, they see this beggar and he's putting up his hands and he's saying, Lila, Lila. You know, he's begging for help. And the children run into the garden and they say, and they stand before Hajj Abdullah and they say, why are some people rich and some people poor? Have any of you ever had that thought? I mean, I've had that thought. Yes, you, me too. And so, so Hajj Abdullah said, well, before, let me just tell you something. When the beggar is saying, Lila, Li means Li for the sake of God, but Li also means it belongs to God. Like we say, inna lillahi, surely we belong to God, right? So he says to the children, go and take this change out to the beggar and then come back and I'm going to explain something to you. He said, I just have to tell you, dear children, all of you, did any of you, any of you out there, did you give yourself your mother and father? Did you give yourself your life? Did you give yourself who you are? You didn't give yourself anything, right? Allah gave you everything. And so he gave you everything, but it's on loan to you. It's just a loan what you've got. Who you are is just a loan. It's a trust you've been given. And then Allah sends you all these ways that you can give it back. So anyway, Hajj Abdullah gives the children some money and they run and take it to the beggar. He said, when somebody reaches out to you, do you ignore them? Children, when someone reaches out for you to, for help, do you ignore them or do you, do you help them when they reach out? You know, even anyone is reaching out. Maybe there's someone sad at school and they're reaching out and they're, they're lonely. So of course, so then the children go and give the money to the beggar and then they come back and then Haj Abdullah said, children, I'm going to tell you a story. Now, wait till you hear this story. There's how not to give and how you should give. All right. Once upon a time, there was a king. And there were some people in the village that didn't have any food. So he went to this man, the man you see here with the red top. And he was a, a landowner and he had tons of like animals and fruits and vegetables. And he said, Go, go, rich man, 
take some of the food and feed the people in the town. But this rich man, he forgot that his farm was only on loan. It was a loan from God. It was, it was a trust. He thought, this food is mine. So he goes into town and look what he does. He holds the food up on a plate. You see him doing it? And so the people, the poor people have to reach up. They feel low. They're like begging for food, right? And even they're thinking, oh my goodness, next time he comes into town, do you think we're beholden to him? Do you think we now maybe have to take care of his horse for the day? Is that the right way to give or the wrong way to give, everyone? Wrong, right? Wouldn't it be exactly, <laughs> wouldn't it be terrible, you know, if you were giving something to someone and you made them feel low and begging, right? Now you're going to hear the right way to give. Once upon a time, there was the wonderful king and there was a poor widow. And the poor widow in town had no money to educate her children. So he sent this wonderful man, this man on the right in the beige coat. He was an orphan. And he grew up, some wealthy people taught him finance and money. And so the king went to him and said, see, there's a poor widow. She's in town. She needs money. So he took her gold. Look how he's gone. He's taken the gold. He holds the gold low. He doesn't hold it up high. He holds it low and he bends down a bit and he looks up into her face. And he says, you can read it on the screen. Oh, blessed lady. What a favor and an honor it is for me that you accept this humble offering, which I am delivering to you on behalf of the king. The king is Allah, right? King is God, right? Mm -hmm. By accepting, you make it possible for me to fulfill my sacred duty. I am the one receiving the benefit. Each of us is given special skills when we come into this world, which are meant to be ways of serving others, but it is very difficult if we are born or become rich. So what he's saying is, I beg you to take this gold in order that I may fulfill my duty to God. And what is the duty to God? He's given us skills and a place in time and space and connections. And these are the ways we are supposed to help other people to return that favor. And I have to tell you children, that when I read this particular story, it changed my life. And I'll tell you how. We're all told we should be humble, not proud. That we should learn to be utterly humble before people. And I was thinking, how do you feel humble? Well, now, as a result of this story, I know I'm nobody. I didn't give myself who I am. I mean, writing these Ghazali children's books, who gave me the ability, the skills, the the knowledge of the scholars that I knew, who actually, who actually gave me the connections, like you all, Allah. So since I'm nobody, right, I can feel humble, not full of pride, right? So remember, this is a very, very important story. For me, it was like, it really changed my life, to be quite honest. And then, let me just do this. Now, <clears throat> let me put my glasses on here. Zakat, zakat, giving charity, cleanses your heart and purifies what you have, right? Because it all belongs to God, right? And zakat is always good for you all. Now, I'm not, you all aren't paying that kind of zakat, but you can give things away too, because it's, it's a test to, for you to practice your generosity. And you're all, you all are going to get to do this with your toys, all right? And uh, it's not only a test. But, you know, if we fail to be giving things away, we start hoarding things, keeping all of our toys, and it makes us greedy, right? We hang on to what we have, you know. But, by the way, it's very dangerous not to be generous and pay your zakat. One of the prophet's companions, his name was Abu Dar. He said, I, I came upon the prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, in the shade of the Kaaba. And he heard the prophet saying, by the Lord of the Kaaba, they are the losers. And so this man said to the prophet, well, who are the losers? Who are the losers, everybody? He said, people who have plenty of wealth, 
um, and 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 uh, don't give. And then there are those who say another type of person that says, "Here, here." They try to give everyone who's in front of them, to the side of them, behind them, to the right or the left of them, and those are the those are very few people indeed. Which type of person are you? Are you always giving to the people in front of you, to the right and the left and behind you? Are you holding on to stuff? No. Right. You you want to be one of the few, the good ones that give, right? All right. All right. So the children, when they heard this story, you know what they did? They ran back to the merry-go-round and they felt in their pockets and they did have some change. So they ran to the children and they said, we don't want to be losers. We want to polish our hearts from greed, right? So this is, you know, every opportunity you have to give, it's a blessed chance, right? So then Hajj Abdullah, he sits with the children. They've come back in the woods and they're sitting with him in the forest by his big tree, right? And he said, you know, kids, even though you're too young to pace a cat, you, you need to understand it and you need to practice the virtues that are underneath of it, right? But you need to also know there are different kinds of zakat. And also they are manners, different kinds of manners when you give and you receive. And then certain things qualify people for being able to receive zakat. And then there's something called sadaka. Have you all heard of sadaka? It's just voluntary charity, giving. Yeah. You heard of that? And did you know even a smile? Yeah, yeah. That's, you know that, it's sadaka, right? It's charity. Yeah. Okay, so then, you know, people um, pay this zakat once a year before Ramadan, and they, 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 if you're on a farm, maybe you're, all your wealth is in far, farm animals. Maybe you have sheep, and you give a certain amount of your sheep, your extra sheep. Maybe you grow corn, and you give corn. Uh, maybe you have camels, right? You give, and you have, extra camels, right? So you would be giving something like the things that you have. But in today's world, people don't have camels. They may have bank accounts. They may have jewelry. They may have extra land or wealth. And that's the kind of thing they give. So you're going to learn all these rules when you grow up, right? Now, you see these children here? These are in a village where they don't have much money, right? And it, there's something called zakat al fitr. And that is, you want to give it before the Eid so everybody, you see, they've come to get food. So everyone has enough food for the Eid. Wouldn't it be sad to have Eid and no food? Wouldn't that be sad? But there's also regular zakat, which you can pay, you know. In and, and it would be sad if we had Eid and no candy. Yeah. Exactly. Imagine no candy, nothing, right? So anyway, um, did you know that there are um, five parts that are necessary to pay as a cat, you know? And children, I mean, you can, let's pretend, let's pretend you're grownups. Will everybody pretend you're a grownup right now? Okay. Yeah, sure. You're a grownup. Okay. Now, um, these are the first thing I want you all to do, all right? Put your hands on your hearts right now. Feel your heart, all right? Before you give your zakat, you have to intend something from your heart. Pretend you're in God's presence right now. And you've decided to give back from all the things you have. So your first thing is from your heart. You say, I intend to give this Ramadan. I'm going to give, right? And also, I promise not to delay. I'm not going to just put it off and put it off, right? And now there are two reasons I'm doing it. Now think of all of this. One, I'm doing it because I want to help other people. Do you want to help other people? Yes. And also, I'm also doing it because I'm obeying Allah. Didn't Allah ask us to do this? Yeah. But you know what? Maybe sometimes it's not easy. It's even easy. Say you have a lot of money. You've got to figure out how much extra you have. You have to set aside the correct amounts. And there are eight types of people you have to give to. It's not easy to do all this, right? So what, the, what about you all do this? You go in your bedrooms and you make a huge pile of all your toys. You have a lot, I bet, don't you? 
Uh, yeah, I already have a pile. Of I have like two yes. piles, a lot. Yeah. yeah, you have a pile, all right? So now um, you have to... You have to be very honest. You want to give, you're, you're going to give some away. You don't have uh, money to give, but you have toys, all right? So another thing you need to do is it's important is in, in some, um, oh, these are, these are some children. They had basketballs and they wondered, my goodness, we bought the basketball. Do we have to pay as a cat on it? No, no, they don't, right? No, they don't. Now, you see, when you have your sakat, you know what? If you give it to people in another town, another city, the people in your own town feel sorry. It says here, when the money and goods are collected in a town and your toys, right? It's usual for these to be given to the needy in the same town. The poor would have their hopes crushed if everything was sent off to a different place. So that's the fourth important thing, that you give it in your own town. And also, there are different categories of people that you give to. Do you know, there are people who are very poor. They don't even have a change of clothes. Then there are needy people, right, who don't make enough to survive. Then there are people who have debt. They owe money. And then there are prisoners who are deserving. And then maybe there are people who are traveling for the sake of God, right? And so all of these are categories of people. Now look at this little girl here. We have been learning from Imam al-Ghazali that there are both inner and outer ways of doing everything, just like in wudu and prayer. Remember in wudu and prayer, you can do your wudu fast, or you can be remember from last week, two weeks ago, you can be doing your wudu and saying, may Allah forgive me for what I've done. Allah, please make me, as I'm rinsing my mouth, say the right thing. That's the inner thing to do. And with your prayer, remember, are you just moving your lips? Are you just doing postures? Are you just saying ayat and you don't think about it? No, there's an inner way to pray and an inner way to do wudu. Well, there's an inner way to give zakat as well, right? Giving to the needy is outward help, but inwardly, are we helping ourselves by just doing what God asks us to do? Yes, right? So let me go on now. Oh, sorry, it keeps doing this. Now, uh, you to start with, you know, you need to, um, you, they're inward manners of giving. Here's a little boy, he's sitting with his toys. Imam Al-Ghazali makes a great suggestion for polishing greed of your golden heart children. Get used to giving things away all the time. Force it to do every day, give something every day. And you know what? If you do that every day, kids, it's gonna become a habit. And this is for adults too. Every day, give something. Just keep doing it. Little, big, not so big, little, and it'll become a habit. And that will then it it won't be so hard once it becomes a habit. So we want to um, um, giving giving zakat is a test. It helps you reach the next world, and it helps to polish greed off your hearts. But it's also a way of thanking God for all that you have, like. You know, maybe you're attached to your stuff and you really love your stuff. Maybe this little boy, what is he putting into the box here? Maybe it looks like a kind of yellow, I don't know what it is. Maybe yeah, it's a, and he also it looks like an orange a trumpet. It does. Oh, it looks like a trumpet. You're right. Trumpet. I bet what maybe it's really hard for him to part with that, right? So there are three types of people who give, right? Now, you remember what the prophet's life was like, do you remember how he had very little? Someone would come and he'd give them all the food he had in the house. Well, one day he said to the companion, Omar, right? Now with Sakat, did, what did you keep back for your family? And the companion Omar said, I gave half of everything and I kept half from my family. And then he went to Abu Bakr Sadiq and he said, and what did you keep back for your family? And he said, what I kept back from my family was a lot in his messenger. I gave everything. Now, these are incredible people that they can give everything. But then they're the kind of people, right? Who um, they give, they, they, keep, they give a lot, but they keep, keep back for all of their needs and in case there's an emergency. 
and they don't live in luxury. That's pretty hard to do still. And then the normal people who just give exactly what was asked, no more, right? But don't you think it's good to be generous at all times, everybody? What do you think? Should you always be generous? <laughs> yeah. Okay, look at this little boy. Oh, can you read what he says? I'm pretty greedy with my things. It's not easy sharing or letting my friends take turns with my bike or giving things away. I find that I want to keep it all. So, my goodness, the Quran says, whoever is saved from his own greed, those are the successful ones. It's very important to clean your heart from greed because you know what, he, what the prophet said, peace and blessings be upon him? He said, greed, holding on for, to everything, right? That can lead you to becoming completely lost. Can you imagine getting completely lost? So children, would you, would you like, would you take the habit with all of you promise to give something, even something little every day? Do you all promise to do this? Mothers and fathers too? Because if you do it every day, you know what? The greed will go down, 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 and happiness will go up, up, up. Because you know what? <coughs> it's fun to give people and it makes you happy and you will love it. So now the third, the third aim of Zakat, right? I have a question. Please ask it. What is it? So I don't get how I get lost if I'm greedy. Like, I don't get how. All right. I'll tell you how. Because it makes a big dirt on your golden heart. And, that, and you lose your way if you have a dirty heart, you know? Do you know, a clear heart is like, have you ever seen a pond and trees are reflected in it? beautiful reflections but if the pond is full of waves right you can't see anything everything is it's not reflected correctly the tree looks like just a bunch of spots right if your heart is covered with spots how can it reflect Allah's light right you want to keep your heart totally golden so that's a very good question I'm glad you asked it right so you know, I also I, have a question. What, I would like to hear it. What is your question? When you say a like like you do it, what if you can't find some something to give your toys to, and then you, when you go up and you're like a doll, doll, then you have have like a kid or um or or like a nephew or something. And does it still count if you give it to a nephew? Yeah. Yes, you can give to anybody. Even, I'll tell you what, even if you have a handful of peanuts and you go and give a peanut to a cat or you give a, a cookie to your mother, all that is giving, just little bits of giving. You all can find little, you know what giving is? You can run in the kitchen and say, mommy, I want to give you a surprise. I'm going to set the table. That's giving too, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. And, also, and also, I was wondering, if you have a pet, Pet, does it count if you give them food? That's okay. giving, right? Yes, and they will. They they love to be given to. You know, everybody yeah. likes. Don't you like to receive gifts when someone gives you something? Do you like that? Yes, we all love it. Yes. We all love it. Oh, well, there you go. Yes. So, yeah, and so yes, and so also. Um, you know why we're so lucky? You know, with for our bodies, if we do fasting and prayer. Oh, we're our, it, in a way we're showing thanks that our what body. What if you had nothing to give? Everybody has something to give. You, could just, you know what you could do? You could just take a piece of paper and write a little card, I love you, mom, and take it and give it to her. Wouldn't that be giving something? What yes. if you don't have anything? Anything, yeah. But so, so, so helping, what I, oh, like helping around the house, that's. Given. That's right. Yeah, exactly. So now what I want you all to think about is this. Remember what the good person does. They're running and they're saying, here, 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 to the person in front of them, to the person at the side. We want to be children and grown-ups that say, here, here, have this. You know, someone comes into your house to visit. Here, have a cookie. You know, so let's be the group of the good group that says here. All right? Now. 
And now I move to another picture here. Now, uh oh, there's some inner duties when you give, okay? And you can start these from right now when you're young, all right? You see this little girl? She's putting money in the donation box, but she's showing everybody. Is she trying to show off and impress everybody? It says, if you give yes. the cat or any charity in order to impress or be seen by others, your good deed is worth nothing. What you should do should be done in secret. The prophet said, peace and blessings be upon him. God doesn't accept the good deeds from somebody who reminds everyone of the favors he has done for them. Say you go and do something nice for someone. You help your mother and then you run and tell everyone, daddy, I help mother. You go to your brothers, you go to your grandmother. I, I help mother. So you're trying, where are you taking your credit from Allah or from them? You're just trying to, you know, you're trying to remind everybody what a good person you are. So you don't want to do that, right? That would be the wrong thing to do. Showing off. All right. And so anyway, uh, God records your deeds. You know, the angels record your deeds, your good deeds. He, d he records what you do in secret, what you do um, in public, and what you do only to be seen by others, like people who are bragging, right? But sometimes, you know, it's, it's hard to remember, you know, that we're, we're, we have golden hearts. And you think people won't like you if you don't impress them and show off and tell them what you've done, you know? And you know, we all do this. I mean, sometimes I want people to know when I've done something good. Do you ever experience that? Have you ever experienced that? Did you want people to know if you've done something good? Yes. But, but you yes. know, when we, but when we watch people bragging and telling everybody the good they did, doesn't it impress us most if we notice somebody is doing it silently and sort of in secretly? That's much more impressive, you know? So also, it says, also, look at this. If someone asks you for money in public, you should always give it to him or her. You don't, you, you might risk your heart, you know, by showing off, but also, you also don't want to hurt somebody by turning them down. If somebody reaches out, you know, I keep dollar bills, $20 bills in the car. When I'm driving around, if I st come to a stoplight and somebody is there playing music or they have a sign, they need money, I unroll the money and immediately give it, right? Because they've reached out and because I don't want to turn them down. You don't want to disappoint someone who's reaching out to you. But also, there is the question, you want to do it in secret, right? You don't want to show off your giving money. So then there's this question that arises. What if you're at a fundraiser and everyone's saying, who's going to give, the, 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 the auctioneer says, who's going to give more money? We're raising money for this, for this mosque. And if you raise your hand, maybe it's not to be, to be a show off. Maybe it's by you raising your hand and saying, I will give $500, that maybe encourages other people at your table and they feel, I'll give 500. So your intention is to get other people to do it. It's not to show off. And also there's another thing too, you know, um, for example, here is a man, okay, Abdullah asked, but what if someone gives a lot of money to help build a mosque? People will know about this. Father Hamza replied, yes but the upright giver wouldn't remind people. So I don't think you can give and people can know about it, but you don't want to remind people. By the way, everyone, I gave $500 to the new mosque. Yes, yes, I gave, I gave. Would that be good or would that be showing off? Showing off. Yeah. yeah. Showing off and good. Showing <laughs> off. Yeah. But by the way, say, say you give, to a poor person, you know, and they receive what you give to them. Do you know what? They also get blessings because they are helping a rich person to fulfill their duty of giving, right? Do you know rich people? They have many trials because yeah, they, they, they face being greedy and full of pride. If you're poor, how can you be greedy, you know, or, or show off because you have nothing? So, in any case, even a poor person is helping a, 
is being generous to a rich person by receiving what they give. So, you know, um, we need to see our zakat or our, oh, another thing. This is important. Let me see if it's the next picture. Look, here's a little girl. She has nothing. If you saw that little girl, wouldn't you give her something? Wouldn't you give her something, everybody? What would you give her? Yes. Toys. Toys. I would give her money. Money. Yeah, exactly. She's, she anything has, that I, anything that toy? I don't need yeah. and, I, and I have that I can get. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we don't, we, and we don't want to remind her that we're being generous. But I'm going to tell you something, kids. Being greedy is so bad for your heart that here are some ideas from Imam al-Ghazali to keep you from being so greedy. Listen to this, okay? Realize what you're giving is small. Okay, if you go in your room with your pile of t toys and you only give some toy you don't care about, one little toy, and there's the rest of the pile there, just realize, right? Right, I'm, I'm really giving very little, right? And, and then you have to remember, all those toys are just from Allah and they're on loan. They're for you to use and to help and serve with. So this, you should feel shame for not giving more, right? And then for example, let's say, let's say, see these little boys? Oh, a boy at school asked me to watch out for his big collection of Lego pieces. When he came to collect them, I kept a few pieces back for myself thinking it was a small amount and wouldn't be missed. I can't believe I did this because he was stealing them, right? I will be returning them to him. I'm ashamed and embarrassed. So if you do anything naughty or wrong, you can always give it back. You can always say you're sorry and you can always change your ways, right? Now here's, grandfather was a beekeeper, right? And it was time to, for him to give his zakat. So he had lots of wonderful honey. And so the, the children were interested that, you know, they enjoyed the bees a lot. And then when he came to give his honey, you know, beekeepers, uh, we were beekeepers. We had beehives in Egypt and we would take the beehives, not just to clover, but when there was the orange blossoms, just for a short time on the orange trees, we put our hives in the orange trees and, the, and then took them out. And the honey is like little flecks of orange and tastes like orange. I bet you never taste that honey, everybody, because it's so rare and beekeepers usually keep it for themselves. But you know what grandfather did? The children said, so why are you giving your very best honey away? Children, grandfather replied, whom do we prefer? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or others? It is good to give your very best. Would you give your worst food to guests if they came to your home? You wouldn't do that, would you children? So when it comes to going to your pile of toys, try to give your best. I know it's gonna be very hard, but that's the greatest thing that you can do, right? Now also- um, I have another question. Okay, go if, ahead. If you, say if you encourage somebody, but he did give, is that still giving? Because if you encourage somebody to give, it's kind of like you're giving. Yes. That's a way of giving to encourage other people to give. That is very, you all are really smart kids, I have to tell you. I mean, that you even saw that is really brilliant, right? Now, there are eight kinds of people you, you can give to. Let's think about these kinds. Now, you see this old lady here, Haja Sadika, spends every moment in prayer. She's devoted to the next life. We send her food regularly by feeding and helping pious people. I understand we are sharing in the rewards of their practice. What if she didn't have enough to eat and she was too weak to be glorifying a lot and we did nothing about it? So you must, do you ever know people that are old and perhaps poor, but they're very devout people, right? So that's one kind. And another kind is there may be scholars who give their life to studying and teaching. That's another, they may need money. They may need help, right? And then there's another thing you can do. Say you want to give to somebody and you don't want to embarrass them. So you go to their home and when they're not looking, you put behind the couch, maybe some money, maybe some food, maybe some gifts, right? But it's really what's going on is um, 
you are doing it for the sake of Allah. And Allah knows that these people need, need help. So Allah uses you kind of as like a bridge to bring that to them. So these sometimes you don't want to be thanked, do you? You weren't doing it for thanks, were you? You were doing it because it's the correct thing to do. So, um, so sometimes if someone gives you something, you don't have to thank them. You could say, praise to God who didn't forget someone who, who needed help. That's another way to do it. And also, there is another type of person to give to. You see, here's a, di a dignified man. He's very poor and he hides his needs. He doesn't complain. He doesn't say, I'm poor. He doesn't grumble and ask for his needs. That's a good type of person to give to, right? And then there's some people who are disabled or hurt or they've been ill, right? And they need support because they can't even help themselves. That's a good type of person to give to. And then also you may have relatives who need money, right? Or maybe you have people that are your spiritual companions. These are all good people to give to. So now one day the children are gonna, this, we're about to end the story of Zakat before we do fasting. One day the children are going on a hike so they're gonna have a picnic on top of a mountain and they're walking through this town and they see a great number of people who have very little. Some of them are reading Quran. Some of them are smelling, selling uh, small items of food. And, they, they, and they, there's the difference. The people who are fakir are people who really don't even have a change of clothes. But the people who are miskeen, they actually have jobs, but they can't make enough. They can't make enough uh, to, to support themselves. So poor people who don't have enough, they are very aware that they depend on the law. But if you have an awful lot of stuff, you forget that you depend on a law. You, you don't even remember that you're depending on the law. So poor people have that advantage. They know, they know, they're aware that they depend on God. So also if people give us something, right? We, we should thank them. Maybe what is, it's coming from a law, but we have to thank those who give us because uh, the, uh, the prophet said, peace and blessings be upon us. He who does not thank people does not thank God. So it, it's our, also our duty to pray for people who give to us, right? And if people do a favor, we should return it. And if we're unable to return the favor, we can pray for them too. Now, the children here are on a journey. Are we all on a spiritual journey together? You and me and all of us together? We are. Your mother, your dad, your teachers. We're on a journey and we're trying to reach our golden hearts. So here are the kids. They're going up a, a path, the path of their golden heart up the mountaintop. And oh, by the way, if this is another important thing, right? If someone gives you a gift, make a big deal out of it. Say somebody has made something and they hand it to you. What do you just say? I'll just, you just take it and say, oh, thanks. No, wouldn't you say, thank you so much. You make a big deal about them giving you something. And, and like you want to see other people, they're getting praise and we should do it in front of everyone. You have to make a big deal. And even for example, like cooking, look at this lady. It says, my mom cooks all day for the guests but she politely plays it down. When the guests come, she just says, oh, please come for a tiny bit of refreshment. She doesn't say, I've been in the kitchen all day long slaving getting the food ready for you, right? She makes light of it, you know? She doesn't want to attract a lot of praise. So these are some of the ways to give, right? You don't brag about it, all right? Now, also Imam Al-Ghazali said, Avoid things that are doubtful. And that is a mark of somebody on the path to the next world, right? You can feel it in your heart. If you're not sure whether you should do something or not, or whether it's good or bad, ask your heart and your heart will grate a little bit. It'll tell you. So you should avow, avoid, if you don't know whether a thing is good or bad, just avoid it, all right? So the children finally reached the top of the mountain but the path was filled with many difficulties. And they remembered the story Imam al-Ghazali told in the Book of Knowledge that we're on a journey. You children, we're all on a journey. Do you think the path is gonna be easy? 
There are going to be no rocks in the path. No, there are going to be difficult patches, right? But these are our opportunities to polish our heart. So also, if you saw a little girl like this who is sad, what would you, what would any of you all do? What would you do? What would be your, your charity? Tell me. Cheer her up. Cheer her up, right. That would be charity. That's sadaka. You know, even a kind word. And, you know, when you're little, like you all, and let's say like your mothers and fathers, you all are very young, right? And so, and so when you have to give something away, maybe it's tough on you because, you know, it's hard. You want to hang on to your toys. You want to hang on to your wealth. But if you do it when you're young or like your parents' age, many rewards because it's difficult to give. You get to be old, a person like me. I don't mind giving things away because I want to get rid of things, right? I have all the, I don't even need what I've got. Do you think I get as many rewards for that? No. Right now, while you're young, if you give, you get many, many special rewards for that, right? And also another thing, everybody, you don't want to, you don't want to complain. If you're sick, don't complain about it. If you, if, if, um, if you've given charity, don't brag about it. Don't complain about your hardships. Oh, I'm having such a hard time. Do you like to listen to people talking like that? Oh, I'm having such a hard time. I've got so many problems. I've got a headache. Do you like that kind of, do you like to listen to that? No. No. So it's, you're being charitable. You're being, giving charity if you don't do that to people, if you give people a break, right? So we'll end this with the story about the sweater, all right? You know how we talked earlier, how it's better to give things in secret and not show off? Look what's happened here. This little girl said, when I gave my pink jacket to the little girl in the park, I wanted you all to see. Instead of my trying to please God, I wanted everybody to think highly of me. And even worse, I did it openly. I could have hurt the little girl's self-respect. Besides humiliating her, I singled her out from the others. I disgraced myself too. So if you're going to give something to someone, right? You you particularly if they're in need, you don't you want to protect them. You don't want them to be ashamed of being needy, do you? And also, you don't want maybe the people who are looking, she's giving the pink jacket. Maybe they're envious. Maybe they wish I'm getting the pink jacket too. So there is by giving in public, you might create people might feel envious. And you know, you know what Imam al-Ghazali said? You won't believe this, everybody, parents and children. He said, you know, imagine, you might be careful it's when you go out to a party or to a big occasion, if you wear a really fancy new pretty outfit, maybe people will envy, envy you. Do you, want, do, do you want to create envy? No, it's a terrible thing, envy. So even to the point, of not showing off when you go out with your clothes, right? So children, you know, finally at the end. The I, have a question. I have a question. I'd like to hear your question. What is it? Um, my mom told me that the prophet says when when you go outside, I you, you should mm -hmm. your pants on. And you should um you should wear nice clothes clothes but you just said we shouldn't wear nice clothes. no you should we wear nice clothes but not very show-offy very fancy very expensive not to show off with not to make people envy you no we want to wear nice clothes we of course we have to be we have to dress with, dress with dignity and beauty all that that's a very good thing you pointed out thank you can i tell my question now yes oh i'd love to hear your question what is it what does envious mean? Envious is to want what somebody else has. Maybe you see they have a pretty dress or a better doll or a fancier car and you wish, I wish I had what they had. That's to envy. Instead of being, uh, the other way is to be content. I have what Allah gave me. Alhamdulillah, right? Mm -hmm. Thank you. That's a good question. Okay, so now we're going to have the last question. So the children made it to the top of the mountain of their journey. Here, high up among the heavenly clouds surrounding their mountaintop, the children could see clearly with real sight. They could understand all of these invisible inner things 
that go on inside of us that make all the difference. So I think what we've just learned is that it's really, really important the way you give inside, how you are. You know, I think we've all learned something from this. So now we're going to do very quickly. It's very short. The fasting uh, chapter of Ghazali is just two or three pages, but I don't want you to miss it because it's got many amazing things you're going to. Have any of you ever tried to fast Ramadan, even for a day or so? Have you tried? You have? Was it very? I tried that when I was three. I tried. I tried. I was really hungry every Ramadan. You do, you do. Um, even yeah. oh, that's wonderful. I, I fasted. I fasted like a like most of Ramadan. Oh, and me, and once I fasted too. Oh, I'm so. I tried once. I tried to, but my stomach hurt. Hurt. I fasted for two hours. Oh, that's wonderful. Before well, now, I got starving. Well, when you're older, you can do it. Now you're going to hear a I little bit about 25 it. 25 days. 25 days. That's brilliant. That's just great. All right. So I'm going to start out <clears throat> and tell you a little, a few highlights here. All right. Okay. Fast. We're going to hear some fasting. Okay. Look at this. See these kids in this fortress they made out of cardboard? Mm -hmm. Fasting is like a protective fortress. It protects you. Once you're inside, notice that when you are you, when you are not full, but you feel a bit weak from fasting, you feel more spiritual. When you're slowed down and you don't feel all your everyday busy self, it's easier to be more aware of your spiritual heart. The fasting kind of weakens you, but it's actually, it's like a safe fortress. You can get inside and you're not just totally overwhelmed by all your worldly. It gives you a state of peace, right? And Hamza Yusuf said, it also lets you feel when you're calm, you feel gratitude, right? You're, you should, can be grateful that you have eyelashes. Why, why aren't we happy to have eyelashes and eyelids? They're like windshield wipers for our eyes. We can say, yeah. Alhamdulillah, we have eyelids. We can start to think about things we might overlook because we calm down when we're fasting. Right. And also because if, if we didn't have eyelashes, have, we would look ugly. Oh, you remember that. Remember that we, we were doing that from that's one we were talking about the sunnah last time of prayer. And if your prayer didn't have all the sunnah, it would be ugly, like not having eyelashes. Good for you that you remembered that. You really uh, learned a lot last time. I'm very proud of you. And also remember. In Ramadan, also, the doors of paradise are wide open, and there's a special gate to Jannah, and it's called the uh, Gate al, al Rahan. It's a Rahan for people who fast. Now, did you know that fasting, just like wudu and prayer, has inner and outer parts? The outer parts of, of fasting are what? Giving up food and drink and water and all that all day long. Isn't that right? That's what you do. But did you know there's something you can do inside too, like being patient? Patient is being patient is like invisible, right? Okay, let's look at this. Here are these children. They're being patient. Look at that. They're sitting with a big cake and they're fasting. Little Abed added, yes, fasting can teach us a lot of different things. What if mother made a yummy cake and put it on the table? I would certainly want to run up and have a big bite right away. But when we are fasting, we have to be patient and we wait for later. We get a chance to practice and learn patience, which we know is very important. In fact, we're told that um, half, of half of fasting is patience because it's that hard. You know, there's a, there's a Hadith al-Qudsi. You know what a Hadith al-Qudsi is? This isn't something just that the prophet himself, peace and blessings be upon him, said. It's something he heard from Allah, right? And it says, God, by the way, God is boasting to his angels about a young person, it could be one of you, who is devoted to God's worship and service. He's, and, he's, and, the, and he says, oh, young person, who have given up your desires and sacrificed this time of your health and your strength for my sake and me, you are like one of my angels. So in other words, children, 
you know, you're active and you want to be outdoors and you're running around and all this, you got all this energy and all of a sudden you're fasting, you're giving up all that running around. Your grandmother, maybe she's just sitting at home anyway and she's not giving up much, but it's, it's tough. You've got to give up fun activities and running around and all your energetic stuff. So when you fast and you give up some of all that and you're calmed down, you get very, you get to be like one of Allah's angels. Wouldn't you all like to be one of the angels? Sure. And also, it's also because you get a very special relationship with Allah when you fast. Fasting is done alone only for me. This is Allah saying it. So I give a special reward for it. Only God knows if you're fasting. People can see you praying, can't they? People can see you doing wudu. People can see you giving zakat. Can they see you fasting? No. How can they tell whether you're fasting? You could have secretly eaten a bite of candy, right? And so it's so. I have is, something to share. What? Yes. Yeah. Go ahead, share. Sorry. Um, I mean myself. Uh, um, do you know when you break your fast? I'm pretty sure if you stop thinking of a, of a loss for one second, and I'm pretty sure that breaks your fast too. Is that true? What What was the question? If well, it wasn't really a question. It was kind of a question. I asked, asked when um I heard I heard some where that if you stop thinking of a law for a second when you're fasting in in that it breaks your fast is that true? Well, no, you can't possibly think of a law all the time, but you want to come back to thinking of a law. None of us can do it. It's too hard, but we are trying. That's you got it right. It's the aim. What you've talked about is what we aim to do. It's the ideal but it doesn't break your fast if you can't think of him at all times. We wish we could, but what's happening is our fasting is starting to like, um, oh, it's lowering our, our nafs, our lower self. We're getting weaker. And, all, and also when you're fasting, it, it's like a shield, it protects us, you know? And look at the Kaaba here. Imam al-Ghazali explains that just as the Kaaba and the sacred sanctuary that surrounds it are specially honored by Allah, even though the whole earth is sacred and belongs to him, fasting is special to Allah among all the ibadah. You know, we, we have prayer and, and everything else, and those are all wonderful, but he says fasting is special the way the Kaaba and the sanctuary is special. So it's a, it's a very special thing we're getting to do. Now, all right, children. Um, now, I know you all, all of you want to keep your pure, golden, noble hearts golden, okay? So I'm going to tell you the, the, the outer and the inner ways to do it with, with fasting, okay? To start with, there are six things you've got to do, okay? And it's outer. First, the moon has to be seen. Did you all know that? that someone has to see the crescent moon for Ramadan to begin, right? Yes. You knew that, right? Yeah. Right. And then also, then yeah. also the night before, the night before, and I've forgotten this, every night before you're going to fast the next day, you have to intend that night. Tomorrow, Thursday, I intend to fast for, for Allah, for Ramadan. You can't wake up in the morning and think, oh, I'm going to fast. You're supposed to intend it the night before. So I want you all to remember that, right? And then, of course, you all know that uh, you can't take anything in, not medicine or nothing. And you can't go in the bathroom and uh, gargle water, hoping some will give you some relief. You can't do that, right? So, and there are other things you can't do, but grown-ups will tell you about this and all these extra rules you'll find out. But also, you want to eat. You don't want to, like, eat it, have zahur at midnight. You want to wait until it's close to the Fajr prayer as you can to have your to have your um your last bit of food to eat. And then you want to hurry and when the fast is over, you want to hurry and break it with dates and water. You all know that. And by the way, uh, afternoon, you don't want to brush your teeth or use the, the sawak because that also gives you relief. And we're not trying to get relief, right? Now, what it is good is if now listen to this, children. 
it's good if you're doing Ramadan, you can recite and study Quran, maybe a 1 30th every day. And in evening, do you ever go with your, your parents to the mosque to do the Tarawiya prayers? Have you ever done that? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Now I'm gonna no. yeah. now guess what? I'm gonna tell you something. Yes. Very, here's something yes. very, yes. very exciting. Okay, here's very exciting. Do you know the uh, prophet peace and blessings be upon him? He would spend the last 10 days in the mosque making a retreat. It's called Ittikaf. Can you all say Ittikaf? Say it. Ittikaf. 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 All right. Ittikaf. And he, in, in fact, he he, he uh, took his family and the companions. Everyone went and did that. And they stayed the last 10 days. Because in the last 10 days, by the way, one of those days, there will be the night of power. And if you happen to be praying at that time, it's worth more than a thousand months. So it's, it's in the last 10 days. And the, as I said, the prophet did it with his family. Well, let me just tell you something, children. Listen to this. One of the children exclaimed, Omar, you don't have to wait until you're, till next year. The mosque near my house has a special program during the last 10 days. We children take our sleeping bags. During the day, we have special classes a chance to read religious books, and of course, we recite Quran. By already going on retreat at our age, we can start the practice of an important sunnah of our blessed prophet, alhamdulillah. Not only that, we can polish our hearts by practicing patience. So children, you might ask your local mosque next Ramadan, if you all can come in, maybe just for a few hours and practice your retreat, maybe you just do it a little bit and get used to it. Wouldn't that be fun to do? You get to do the very special retreat. I mean, it's amazing. Now, Haj Abdullah. All right, Haj Abdullah. I have a question. Okay, go ahead. That's like, okay. What? Um, like, um, uh, um, why did... The kids say we have to bring our sleeping bags when they were not even going to sleep there. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, maybe you could sleep there with your parents, but maybe you could also just take a nap or rest, you know. Yeah, hi. You might, hi. You, might, you know what, you all are really, hi. really smart, you know, because hi. I thought. Hi. Hi. Somebody saying hi. Hi. So you're really right about that. Uh, it could rest. Maybe your father or mother would be doing the whole spending the night. And maybe you could spend the night too. But you'd have to be very good. You'd have to be very quiet. Could you do that? Could you be quiet? You could give it a try. You could try. Yeah, probably not. Probably not. Well, just like some of you are just fasting for a few hours right now, maybe you could just go and do retreat for an hour. Do that. All right, now we got to the end of our program. You all are tired. All, I think you all are real troopers. The fact that you all have stayed up this late and you've been this attentive. Hello. Hi. Hello. Whoever is calling out, they should be quiet so we can do the last bit. All right, here we go. All right, oops. Oh dear, I wanted to go back to here. Haj Abdullah. All right, they went to Haj Abdullah and he began. began. I am sure you came today because you wanted to learn about the inner secret conditions of the fast. What Imam Al-Ghazali teaches us, you should first know there are three levels of fasting, everybody, three levels. One done by most people, and then there's the fasting of the elect, and then there's the special folk, and the, the fasting of the elect of the elect, the really, really special people. The children wondered, if they were special enough to be in the second group. Okay, I'm gonna tell you the three groups. The normal group is people who give up eating and drinking and all of that during the day. You know what, you just the normal fast. But then the special people, and you all can start to do this, you can become part of the special people. They also- I'm already the special people. <laughs> Of course you are. You already got a golden heart. You just want to keep it that way, you know. So then the next thing is, you know, in wudu, 
how we, when we rinse our mouth, we're not just spitting the water out. We're actually thinking, Ya Allah, keep me from saying bad things. Washing your ears. Don't let me listen to bad things. You can do it when you're fasting. So all the body parts, the ears, the mouth, the nose, the feet, the hands, they get to fast too. And I'll tell you how, right? And then the last one is the fasting of the heart. Now, this is this is like the, the prophet, peace and blessings be upon him and all the wonderful saintly beings. These are people who only in Ramadan, they never think of anything. That a, so that a prophet? Yes. You know what? Um, one of you mentioned about thinking only about Allah. They only think about Allah and the last day and they and 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 nothing more but that's very hard to do you have to be so pure your heart to be, has to be so polished and so golden but that's so we're going to try to be like the middle group we're not going to just fast from food and drink and watch tv all day and hang out and think and say any dumb thing and and listen to stupid music we're not going to do that we're going to we're going to try to do the fast of the special people, the Salahim. So I want you all to begin, right? Now, let's think of ways that your eyes can fast. <laughs> do you think your eyes are fasting if you're just watching hundreds of dumb cartoons all, of the, all day long? Or what would be better to do with your eyes? <laughs> can anyone think what would be a more beautiful thing to do with your eyes? What could you look at that's beautiful? Listen to the Quran. Yes, your ears. That's good for your ears. Eyes. Maybe you go outside and look at the trees and the flowers. You know, right? Something good for the eyes. Maybe to uh, to maybe to like watch something on TV. Like that's on Ramadan. Like something. Oh, that's good. You see, that's good. You could. That would be a good thing. And like with your mouth, should you be talking all? Talking all the time, or should you like read Quran or be quiet? What do you think is the better thing to do with your mouth? How, would you trying to be quiet? What if you Is argue? Is that a good idea? Would you be like arguing? Horrible. I have in comments. You what? I have in comments. What is your comment? Uh, I just can't wait until Ramadan. You want to fast already? You want to start fasting now? Yeah. You can. There are two days a week some people fast. So why don't you try to fast part of a day and do all of these things in your fast? That would be fantastic. That would be great practice. All right. You can so, fast your eyes by looking at a beautiful water fountain. You know, what? Don't that, is so, water that is so beautiful. What you just said is so, I can't even tell you. Fast your eyes by looking at a waterfall. That makes me cry. That's so beautiful. What's your, who said that? That's really great. What's your name? Uh, Ibrahim. I said that. Oh, Ibrahim said that. How lovely. Now, if you if you were bragging, bragging or gossiping, wouldn't that be, be beneath your inner dignity to brag or gossip or, or argue in Ramadan? Wouldn't that be horrible? Horrible, mm. right? Yeah, that would be horrible. Well, okay, there's there's something I've got to tell you. You know, um, this is a terrible story. Well, but, yeah, this is a hadith. In the life of the prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, there were two ladies, and they came up to him, and they said, we're old and frail and weak. We would like your permission to break our fast in Ramadan. And he handed them a bowl and he said, you've already broken your bath, fast. Take this bowl and throw up in it. And all these people were standing around and looking and they went, Ugh. and you know what came out? Pieces of flesh and blood because they had been gossiping. And you remember from the book of knowledge, if you talk a back, a backbite behind someone's back, talk about somebody badly or behind their back, the, the Quran says it's the same as eating their dead flesh. So these women, and this is a true story, a true hadith of the prophet, peace and blessings be upon him. He told them to do that and everyone saw it. So certainly you wouldn't want to gossip during ever, ever anyway, 
But if you did it, if you gossiped and talked badly about someone during Ramadan, you broke your fast. You lost the day. You t- so you, no one will do that. You would never do that, would you? I mean, you'd never do it anyway, all right? Oh, by the way, children, um, now let's see. Have we come to the end? There are three levels. Oh, we've done the three levels of fasting, okay? And, okay, the next thing is, if you're, if, you're, if, you're, if you're hearing gossip, you wouldn't listen to that, would you? Would you run away if somebody talks badly, right? And also, with your feet and hands, don't, yeah. do, bad, don't do bad things because... That will um, break your fast if you're if you're trying the inner special way. If you're one of the special people, and actually don't let your feet take you to terrible places. All right, now don't forget when you break your fast. What do you break it with? Dates. Dates and, and water. water. That's right. Now but this. We also do tahari or whatever oh, that was. Oh, that's that sounds delicious. I'd love to hear about this. We then, fill our dates with um with stuff like butter yum. and stuff. Oh yum! Hey. Okay. Well, let me tell you something. Now this is now I don't know how your Ramadans have gone, but Imam Al Ghazali tells you, don't eat a huge amount of food. Don't make up all the food you've missed. Say you're having dinner, have dinner, but don't make up lunch and breakfast. Don't pile it all in, because what we're trying to improve our souls. You know, and not just be all day long thinking about special treats and desserts. And no, no, we're trying to stop thinking about all this worldly stuff. And the spirit of fasting, the spirit of when you fast, is you want to be a little weak, right? You want to reduce your energy, right? It helps you feel more spiritual inside rather than the sort of a go getting attitude. And like, don't sleep all day. Some people sleep I during. Would- yeah, no, you don't want to do that because part of Ramadan... I would do that instead of doing PE class. Oh, well, that's good. And if, you've had a, if you're in school, you need to rest. But there's some people who during Ramadan, they stay awake the whole night eating and having a because good time. Because my PE teacher, yeah. he, he makes us do one of the hardest stretches. Oh, he does. Well, I'm very proud of you, you know. And also, you know, if you go to play the, pray the Tarawiyah prayer with your parents and you're feeling a little weak, you'll feel very spiritual. If you're all stuffed with food, you, you won't feel, you'll just feel heavy. And also, it's, it's like if it were the night of power, you know, if you were there for the Layla Til Qadr and you were stuffed with food, it says that if you're slightly empty, you might even be able to see the heavenly dominion on the on the Layla Til and, and Ghazali said something. Have you ever seen a horse that here's the horse's face and they put a bag on it and, and it's eating out of a feeding bag. It's hanging down and it's got hay in it. Have any of you ever seen that? A feeding bag on a horse? I'm pretty so. No. Well, they, they have uh, them. People I have, like horses and I've seen one before when... When when I really want to go to a horse riding school and I went to one. Oh well, you you were, not horse ride. Yeah, um, I think I. But I, I uh, petted the horses there oh, and I, I saw horses. them. Um. Don't and, you love horses? They're so beautiful. But I did not see a single horse eating. Okay. Well, Ghazali said, "Whoever places a feed bag." between his heart and his breast will be veiled from deeper truths. He's saying that people who have eating, 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 they, they've separated themselves from their heart. He said, lots of food keeps us thinking about the world. And it, you wanna be light, you wanna lighten yourself. And also don't forget when you break your fast, have your water and dates. And, he wa- and very important, Ghazali says, when you're breaking your fast, this is something very important. Be in a state of fear and hope, hoping that your fast was good all day long and you didn't mess it up and afraid, oh my goodness, even if you think you did a good job, you're afraid you might have messed up. If you don't want to think, I did a perfect fast. You, the, the thing is you want to be humble when you're breaking your fast, right? And then 
um, look at these children. And he, the prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, recited Allah's words. The prophet placed his hands on his ears and his eyes, and he said, hearing is a trust, and sight is a trust. The children put their hands over their ears and their eyes, feeling these were precious gifts. Your sight and your hearing are trusts, so you these are given, given to you by Allah as a sacred trust. And so you don't want to mess them up or abuse them. You don't want to listen to bad stuff or see bad stuff. You'd never do that, would you? Right? Now, this is interesting. Yes. The goal of fasting, and this is very, we're at the end. This is very hard for you to understand, but I'm going to say it anyway. The goal of fasting is you're supposed to take on one of the qualities of Allah. And that one is in fasting. He is the everlasting independent, Samadhiya. Does God need anything or he needs nothing? Does God need anything or he doesn't need anything? Nothing. 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 He has everything. So He, he, he needs something like nothing. to listen to Quran. Well, he likes, us to, to, he likes us to recite Quran. Those are his words. But a fasting person should imitate the angels as much as possible because the angels don't want or need anything, anything at all, and they're the nearest to Allah. So, so what we try to do is not be so needy, you know, be content with what we have. So children, what I'd like to say is, oh, you see here, here's this little girl, this inner practice, she's not eating lots and lots of food that increase the body's pleasure and strength. The spirit of fasting is to weaken the body's energy by taking less food. So look, she's not having tons and tons of stuff, is she? Look at her. She's having a correct, simple, humble meal. So what I wanted to end by ask, telling you all, here is Hajj Abdullah, right? I want you all to really think about your golden hearts every minute of the day, all of these ideas, Keep them alive. Every minute, there's a chance to polish. Every second, you have a way you can polish your heart. You can be smiling. You can give something. You can listen to the right thing. You can do the right thing. So the children, this is the end. Here's Hajj Abdullah. The children were deeply relieved to have been introduced to the inner meanings, the kernels inside the outer husks, the beautiful forms of their faith. Hajj Abdullah's last words were, O oh youth, He's talking to you, children. Oh, youth, know that you are in charge of your own hearts. Children, parents, we're all in charge of our own hearts, right? And as he slowly disappeared between the trees, uh, the little boy Abu Bakr said, now we know what to do and why. So children, parents, me, we've listened to Al-Ghazali and we have all these wonderful things. We know what to do and we know why to do them. So let's start doing them bit by bit, all right? And next all right. week, next week yes, we're, gonna, right. we're gonna do, all right, we're, we all promise? We all promise? All right, yes. we're all gonna try. What's the next week? Yeah. yeah. Next, uh, week is, next week is the Hodge, yeah. and it's really fun. Some children going on the Hodge. And then afterward, we What's do- What's the Hodge? The pilgrimage, the Hodge, every year the Muslim, you're going to find out next week. Next oh, week. Like, like we go to Umrah? Yes, exactly. You're right. That's the smaller pilgrimage. You, but you're going to, you know what you're going to learn? All the secrets of the Umrah next time. The Isn't it like a longer version of Umrah? It is. It is. It's, it's an extension. The beginning of the Hajj is like Umrah. And then you go on to, to, to Mount Ara, uh, Ara, uh, <laughs> uh Anyway, to uh, you go out to the plain of Mount Ara, Arafat. Arafat. Yeah, what was I thinking? Uh, I forgot. Anyway, so we're going to do that. In the final vinyl session, we're going to have a magical thing on all the things we believe. You know, what is in our heart, what we believe in. It's going to be so much fun. So you know what? I've kept you up 17 minutes later than you're supposed to. And I know you all want to go to bed, but I want to go to bed. So I love you all, and I thought your questions today were wonderful and your answers, and I just can't believe
that you can be as young as you are and you're so smart. Annie, Thank mashallah. you. Mashallah. mashallah. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Assalamu alaikum. 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 Assalamu alaikum.